think we're good to go. I think we're good to go. Uh, yeah, this has uh, been a long time since I've streamed, so it took a while to get things kind of figured out. I've had some issues with my second monitor. I have to feed it through an adapter because now every video card ever only uses DisplayPort and uh, only one DVI thing. And there goes my monitor again. So occasionally I will have to just duck out of frame and just kind of hit my cord a little bit, and that stops the monitor from screwing up. Very annoying. Anyways, I've got some new features here on stream, and this is really kind of a, a test stream. We're going to do uh, an Eldritch Moon League. Uh, after that, we're going to do a couple Kaladesh crack packs I've got the, uh, the LRR uh, card recognition software working, so they'll appear on screen, kind of nifty. And then I'll try uh, some non-magic games, because I need to prep for my 24-hour live stream that I'll be doing in November, which will mostly be magic. Probably at least 12 of those hours will be magic. But it's for extra life, and so, you know, it's a big video game thing, and I play other video games, so I need to make sure the other video games work. Might play a match of Rocket League or a match of Dead by Daylight or something like that. Um, but yeah, we're going to jump in for what is probably going to be my last Eldritch Moon draft. Uh, I haven't really done many since the league started, and they're fine. You know, the, the convenience definitely is pretty big. I, I do dislike that it changes some things, but, you know, that's how it goes. There goes the monitor again. At some point, I think I just need to get a new monitor, maybe the one that has a display port cord. Um, I don't think it's the adapter, though. It seems to be the cable. The adapter seems like it's fine-ish, maybe? Scarborough, hello! Hello! So, we're gonna jump into... Boy, it's been a while since I've drafted. They're not in queues, they're in leagues. What is in queues right now? What's flashback? Scars of Mirrodin. That I do not know. So, we're gonna do... 6222 draft league because nobody does pack per wins and that's why they are dying and going away permanently. Jesus, Kenji. 43 trophies. That's crazy. All right, we're going to join a league. We're going to join with some packs and some things. We're going to get this to actually fill the frame. Just to check, is everything going good? Uh, microphones, good level. You can hear me. You can see everything. All good? <sighs> Two players. So yeah, I'm going to attempt to export this and upload it to YouTube as well, because uh, I know not everybody watches Twitch, not everybody knows how to go back and watch past broadcasts, plus I'm not partnered, so they only stick around for like a week, maybe two weeks. So I'll have the whole thing up on YouTube. We'll probably be on here for an hour and a half or so, maybe two hours. A plus, awesome. I thought these draft keys were supposed to fire like that. Forty three trophies. Wow. I have my one trophy. One trophy. So yeah, I've got my pile of Kaladesh packs. I'll actually grab a couple, because uh, once we're done this, we will crack them open. Which of course means I'm going to have to win some more to fulfill my Crack Pack Tuesdays. I had exactly enough to get through to Ether Revolt. And now I'll be two weeks behind. So yeah, if we get enough viewers, uh, the non-magic game at the end might even be Choice Chamber, uh, which if you haven't heard of it or seen it, it's a game where basically chat decides how miserable my experience is. You vote on what weapon I get and what kind of bonus I get for my jump and etc. Did your last Eldritch Moon draft today? For release tomorrow should be good. I'm pretty excited about Kaladash. It's uh, the sealed format. I don't know. I have my qualms about it. Uh... I feel like there's so many artifacts that your colors in sealed can be really shallow and so many of the common artifacts are bad that you can end up with just a ridiculously shallow pool. 
Um, I think that goes away in draft where you, you know, you get much better card selection. But the sealed, I don't know. We have to try it out a few more times when we're not in pre-release mode, when people know what they're doing and we know a bit more about the format. But I am super excited about the draft. Almost there. Come on. Three minutes. So long. Hey, Magic is Life. How's it going? All right. What do we get? We get nibbles. I like nibbles. I like nibbles quite a bit. Um, there's a murder. And that's it? I mean, Alchemist is good, and so is Conduit, but not first pick good. It's nibbles versus murder. Black's not great. Murder is murder. But I really like nibbles, Nibbles of Frost. I've done a lot of good things with it in this format. Ugh. Nibbless murder. Nibbless murder. Hmm. Oh, you did one draft already. Completely failed. That's not good. Uh, too many mediocre cards. Nothing really worked. The big worm you can give unblockable is one of the best blue commons. Yeah, I could see the uh, uh, the Gear Seeker Serpent being pretty good. First draft on Saturday, Magic? Awesome. Ugh. I mean, I feel bad about passing murder, but... Nibbless. Maybe we can even go blue-red spells. Uh, I'm taking Nibbles. Let's do it. See if we get rewarded. <laughs> hey, how deep do we want to go? How deep do we want to go? There's a Wretched Griff. There's a Bombardment. How deep and forceful do we want to go? Ugh. I mean, the right pick here is, is what? The Bombardment of the Griff? But Geist. Um, hmm. Bombardment, Griff. I mean, Griff is probably the, well, it's not necessarily the most right choice. kind of feel like going deep on this one. Just having some fun. Yeah, I, I agree Bombardment's better. What are the odds we just... Well, let's see if we get this back around. I don't think we will, but let's take Bombardment. Um, well... I guess had we have taken that Mercurial Geist, we don't get much of anything here. Choking, Boon, um, Cultist obviously we can go blue-green, but pick three and we haven't been past an Emerge, but all the Uncommons are here. Um, hmm. Choking or Boon, I think, is the pick. Uh, Blue-black, I've actually had some mild success with despite it not being a great deck. Blue white, eh, red white, red black. Hmm. We did pass a murder. We did pass a murder. That might push me slightly towards the choking restraints. We're not taking oath, we're not taking abandon, we're not taking cultists just yet. Let's take the choking restraints. Hey, Galvanic Bombardment number two. Number two is even better than number one. Um, we're not taking another choking over uh, Galvanic Bombardment and nothing else in this pack. We are taking that hard. I really hope that uh, Mercurial guys come back around now. That would be fantastic. We're taking that Bombardment for sure. Alchemist greeting. Pick five, Flash Weed Lurker? Pick five, Lashweed Lurker seems late. Um, Alchemist Greeting, Ingenious Scab. Another Choking Restraints. I think I might just take the Scab here. I don't feel super likely like we're going to actually get into blue-red spells, just because we've passed Geists plus a Thermal Alchemist. So I think it's... 
I mean, I think scab is probably just better than greetings anyways. Choking restraints. People are really taking it to heart that white is possibly the last one, eh? Lashweed. I think we're too late for that. Yeah, let's go with scab. Ah, uh, and we're battlements. And a stitcher's graft. I feel like... I had this pack in my chaos draft. I had Handwear Battlements as the flip card and Sister's Graft as the uh, the rare. Um, anyways, we have not much. We've got to make mischief, convolute. We could take the Handwear Battlements and hope we hit a uh, Handwear Garrison. Um, hmm. I guess if we do end up blue red spells, make mischief is probably the best card here. Better than a convolute, I think. Yeah, not the best option, but we'll take it. Hmm, wow. Now that seems like a late wretched griff. Ridiculously late. We're not taking anything else here. Retro Griff in the deck. It's really late. So, three more picks until we hope Mercurial Geist come back. Next pick we can get Thermal Alchemist, maybe? No, pick after this. Summary Dismissal, Convolute, another Make Mischief. Um, hmm. I do not like Summary Dismissal. Convolute, I'd preferably not play. Make Mischief. We already have one. Probably don't want a second one. Unless we really do get into that deck. Seems like blue green's open as well. Um Oh, you won't be able to see it. Scarbros, you're in you're in the UK, right? Um I guess we'll just take a convolute here. I don't like any of these picks. Convolute it is. Um Deranged Whelp's fine. We may not be blue-red spells, we may be blue-red. We have some spells and we have to play creatures too. Summary Dismissal is weirdly good. Yeah, I've never had much success with it. Take Inventory is an option, but I think it's less good if we don't get any Alchemists and we didn't get one back. So I think I probably want to play it slightly more safe and take the Deranged Whelp. Oh, no Geists. Uh, I guess we'll take Reaver. We're not going to play Displace. We're hopefully not going to play Reaver. Take the inventory, yeah? Might have been right. Uh, Brute, I guess. Played against somebody who played Lunar Force on me once. Didn't go well for them. Uh, yeah, Laboratory Brute. Not going to play you, I hope. Bold Impaler. Well, if we do end up well, I think we're way too late to go blue-green, right? Hey, DC Sports, how's it going? And Hawkteria. Uh, let's see. We're not going to play any of them. Maybe we pivot into green at some point, but I doubt it. Hey, take inventory. Maybe we could have taken the other inventory as well. We'll take that one. That convolute's not going to get played. Consecrator, away you go. Well, we kind of know what we are. Um, hmm, options. Lots of them. Smoldering Werewolf. Stromkirk Occultist. Wretched Griff number two. Fortune's Favor and Scarecrow are good. I don't think they enter the conversation. I think we're just taking Werewolf here, right? Stromkirk Occultist has never really gotten there for me. Whereas Smoldering Werewolf gets there every time. <laughs> uh, yeah yeah just werewolf werewolf in you go so Falconrath Reaver almost definitely not making it Tree of Perdition Old Aaron Pariah um, what do we get Unsubstantiate Fury Blade I like Unsubstantiate I wish we had some Thermo Alchemists for it Hmm. 
can we pivot into pariah what would we be black red I don't know about pivoting. I think I like the unsubstantiate. No, let's pivot. Or maybe pivot. We'll see what this pick brings us. <laughs> Nothing black. <laughs> Nothing black at all. Uh, we've got another scab. Um, spontaneous mutation. Not better than scab. Cryptolith fragment. No good green no black though so yeah i think we just take scab here we'll want a spontaneous mutation at some point but scab's the pick here bedlam reveler that's nice and it certainly beats hostility fogwalker outcast and otherworldly but boy green now we saw a couple of green things in pack one we didn't see this kind of green though I think Outcast is better than Reveler? No, I think I want to go hard. Spellsies. I know people love Outcast, and I know it's good, and I know it wins games, but... I'm going Reveler. Brazen Wolves, Curious Homunculus. There's another on Substantiate, like the first one. Well, the first one might come back around, actually. So homunculus, we have take inventory, convolute, make mischief. That's it for the moment. Unsubstantiate, I do want one. Brazen wolves. Yeah, I can see wolves. Because I don't think we're going to... We missed the major parts of the spells deck, right? So we need some creature backup. So yeah, let's go wolves. Uh, insatiable gorgers, I guess. Field creeper. I've been unimpressed with gorgers. But I think they're the pick. Time to gorge. In you go. Uh, hey, tattered haunter. I like you quite a bit. I love me a tattered haunter. In you go. Um, Convolute, Falconrath Reaver, <laughs> a splendid reclamation. Um, hmm. Grapple. I don't think we'd even splash for it. Don't think we'd even splash for it. I guess we take the Reaver? There's no real other pick, right? Yeah, let's take a Reaver. I don't think we're going to play that one either. Fortune's Favor. That's fine. Totally fine. Better than a turn aside, I think. Well, no, I know. <laughs> Shreds of Sanity. Again, if you are super into the deck, which we didn't quite get there then it's good, but let's take a fortune saver. Here, I guess we'll take a turn aside. I don't think we're going to main deck it. We're not going to play a Slayer's Cleaver. We're not going to play a Distemper of Blood. Turn aside. Um, Banquet. <laughs> Boy, these are all bad. Maybe we splash black. Who knows? Because we currently have zero vampires, is my guess. One vampire. Maybe we splash black. Otherworldly outburst. I don't like you, but I'll take you. Uh, Bold and Paler. Same deal. Foil. We got there. Lunark Mantle. All right. Pack three. Save us. Save us, save us, save us. I don't even know how, but save us. <laughs> <laughs> Fevered visions, eh? There's a pyre hound. Um, 
Fevered Visions. Yeah, I agree. Last pick mantles. Really surprising. Fevered Vision. So at the beginning of each player's end step, that player draws a card. If the player is your opponent and has four more cards, deals two damage to him or her. We've got Spiteful Motives, Deny Existence, Pyre Hound, Breakneck. Breakneck probably is just the best. Fevered Visions. Probably will wheel, yeah. You got that right. Yeah, let's go Breakneck. Foreboding Ruins. Um, catalog? Sideboard Dual Shot? Raven Gargoyle. It's too bad Voldar and Pariah is too black. I think maybe the Gargoyle here. We won't get another chance at Gargoyle, right? We'll probably get another chance at a dual shot or a catalog. Yeah, let's take Gargoyle. Anguish not making. Is that worth anything? It is in paper, right? 13 cents. Nope, 12 cents. So the answer is no. Um, Aberrant Researcher. Seems dece. Ravenous Bloodseeker. Dual Land, Dual Shot. Chase's Scrutiny. Yeah, I'm all in on Researcher. Might even get that scrutiny back, maybe. Incorrigible youths, man, they really fell off. The Black Red Vampire deck kind of died with Eldritch Moon. Storm Rider Spirit, Drown Yard Explorers. I guess it's between the youths or the explorers, and I think explorers are probably just going to win. There's an insolent neonate. We have zero discard outlets at the moment, right? Yeah, zero discard at the moment. Well, Bedlam Reveler, technically. Just go Spirit, too many four drops. Yeah, I could see that. Get a five drop out there. It always feels so wrong passing, passing youths, but man, they've gotten so much worse. Yeah, let's go Storm Rider. <laughs> Epiphany at the Drown Yard. Ooh, Stitched Mangler. Stitched Mangler. What does this even even do? Uh, top X plus one cards. Two pile. Right, right. That's what that does. Uh, this seems like an easy Stitched Mangler. Super easy. Welcome to the fold. Just the win. Jace's Scrutiny. Well then, um, so without the discard, Welcome to the Fold gets worse. I'm a big fan of Just the Wind. Jace's Scrutiny probably is just better though. Hmm. Not taking a Reduce. I don't like passing up bounce, but I really like the investigate. Really like the investigate. All right, let's take Jace's scrutiny. Um, skin invasion, senseless rage, will dare and duelist. Man, I hate skin invasion. I'm so glad that people really sort of started to realize that it wasn't the massive bomb card that everybody expected it to be. I consider that a giant win from my Shadows Over Innistrad set review. Um, duelist is a four drop. Don't think it's might be better than a fortune's favor. Maybe we're not a senseless rage deck. Hmm. Yeah, let's take duelist. Um, Dissension in the ranks. Sanguinary mage. Big turtle. Seagraph snapper. 
Magmatic chasm. These aren't great. Sanguinary mage, I guess, is the big best thing. Uh, how are we killing big things? Not easily. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the mage. Yeah, that's true. Make mischief is not the best. Fevered Vision's back again. I could see Make Mischief. Well, we do have the Reveler and the Nibblus, actually. I could see a main deck. It's obviously not as good without the Thermal Alchemist, the Weaver of Lightning, etc. Um, yeah, we're not taking a Deny of Fleeting Memories or a Ghostly Wings or a Vessel. So we're taking Fevered Visions. Whether or not we play it is a whole other can of worms. Um, there's that catalog. I don't think we're the, we're definitely not the Epitaph Golem deck. So I guess we'll just take the catalog here. Hey, Jace's Screening number two, and a Bloodseeker, and a Dual Shot. Do these have Madness? They do have Madness, but it's the same cost. Right, right, right. Um, I think we, hmm, I think we just take Scrutiny number two. Neonate. We're not going to play Neonate, but we'll take it. Um, structural Distortion, in case we have to blow up a Westvale Abbey. Um, emissary. Boop. And a Plains. Alright. This is a deck. This is a deck. So we need three cuts. Three cuts. Do we actually play the Fevered Visions? For reals? Uh, what do we cut? I don't think we... We don't want take inventory number one. Ooh, Distortion versus Slayer's play. That's good. That's good. Um, what are we? 17 creatures. We're creature heavy, so duelist. I feel makes sense. Gorgers before duelist? Yeah, that makes sense. One more cut. Griff has a lot of targets. No targets that get value out of it. But it's got targets. Potentially just the gargoyle? Sanguinary Mage. How many spells do we have? Bombardment, Bombardment, Scrutiny, Scrutiny. I guess the Convolute could go. We're not really a Convolute deck. We're attempting to be way more aggro, I think. And we're not playing any of those. Turn aside for the sideboard. Yeah. See what we get. Nine eight sounds good. Early bombardments, double reds. Turn aside over fortune's favor. What are we really looking to protect? The werewolf, the rider, the griff. I think I'll start Fortune's Favor. We'll see if we need the turn aside. But let's give this a go. Let's give this a go. Let's see if this is appearing correctly. Chat window. 
Everything in frame. Cool. Everything is in frame. All right. Got my trademark one land hand. Sounds about right. We're going to mull that. Thanks, Magic Online. I've missed you, too. <laughs> um... I guess we get a, if we hit a land, a turn four duelist. Yay. Hmm. I don't think this is keepable. He kept his seven. If there's an island on top, or we get one really quick. Well, let's be greedy. Ah, on top. Red, eh? Blue. Come on, two drop on top. Instead, it's going to be a Bedlam Reveler. Mono Red. Thanks, Mountain. Super mono red. Well, at least he's given us time. Well, we have a turn for Niblis. So, got there? <laughs> oh, the mirror match. Oh, draft leagues. Take inventory. Why wouldn't we draw lands just straight up every turn? Nibbles. Duelist first to draw out removal. Makes sense. Or even just to get in for three. I like that next turn I attack for six. Our opponent find nothing in their inventory? <laughs> Magic Online, you're an awful person. So there's no flash creatures in blue or red at four mana or less that I know of offhand. So it's not like we're walking into a creature and have to keep up scrutiny. So I'll drop the duelist. Oh yeah, they have to have a burn here. There's no way they don't. Um, Duelist cannot block this turn. Go to attacks. Don't pay costs for anything. No! Oh, rattle chains. True. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. You don't see lightning axe much these days. Blah, 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 blow out. Yeah, turn aside coming in for sure. Dead duelist. Dead nipples. I mean, as long as Magic Online doesn't have it in for us and there's nothing but land still on top, which Magic Online wouldn't do that to us, right? See? Aberrant Researcher. Down you go. How's it going to die? No, oh, it just taps. That's fine. Totally fine. No big deal.
Oh, I guess I should tweet out that I'm actually live on stream, eh? I will take two. I will take two. There we go. Nibbles of dusk, sure. What do we mill? A land. What do we draw? Not a land. Wretched Griff. What's it become? 5-4? Swing in. If he blocks, scrutiny. Doesn't block. So now that brings in other questions. Hey, legendary motorist. I do stream, although I haven't in months. Uh, this is my first one back. So our opponent's clearly stuck. I don't, no, we don't. We don't. We need the researcher. We really need that researcher. Oh, I did have seven. Why did I think I had six? I am unable to count right now. Just the win. Sure. Sure thing. So I'll scrutiny the Nibblus and then draw a card. Oh yeah, super punt. 1.62 punts per hour, sweet. All right, let's scrutiny that. Let's see if we can get a hit a, uh, a bombardment. Bombardment? How are there that many lands on top of my deck? We kept a three lander. Thraben Gargoyle. Um. Yeah, it's hard cast and uh, drop a gargoyle. Draw a card. Bedlam Reveler. Drop a gargoyle. This Reveler is currently red, red, five? Red, red, five. How does our opponent still have five cards in hand? I call cheats. Oh, totally on the dumb hand plan. Stitched Mangler. See a wretched griff. So we're going to take four. That's fine. That's fine. Totally fine. I have one too. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to go Mangler, Researcher, next turn Reveler. Tap down your Dusk. We could transform the Gargoyle and get in for four, take him to 13. No, I like doing that another turn. Let's drop Researcher. Take inventory number two. Opponent still on four lands. Turn ten. Exact opposite problem as us. Gargoyle's super vulnerable here. Yeah, that's true. It's got a lot in the air. Plus burn. I think Gargoyle might even come out for the turn aside. Mmm. I think I'm okay just taking four here, right? Like, I don't really want to trade that. 
Yeah, I'll just take four. Uh, two, two, double strike. Uh, no delirium, so just first strike. Mill, a land, draw, bombardment. Sweet. Um, hmm. Representing Bard of Hostility. So, plus three, plus O. Oh. Makes sense. So I could bash in for six, take him to 11 in the air. Hold him bombardment, but then I can't drop the reveler. Hmm. Yeah, no, let's kill the wolf. Dead wolf. And then let's ancestral recall and see what we get. Ancestral Recall is a great card. Tattered Haunter and a Werewolf. That's going to blow some things up. Um, so... I think I'm pretty okay coming in for... Like, five? Hey, Squirrel. How's it going? <laughs> Riot until Momir. <laughs> I guess we do have to do some Momir tonight. Um... I don't want to leave back only a single blocker with Tattered Haunter. Because if he does have a kill spell plus hostility, I'm taking what? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm taking lethal. So yeah, we're going to go in for five. In for the fives. And drop the Haunter bluffing turn aside. Pass the turn. It says prowess, right? Yes. Yes, it does. Can we kill them in two turns with the werewolf flip trigger? Uh, it doesn't trigger on flip. It triggers on attack. Do you just mean attacking, killing? Um, well, I mean, he comes in, and we can go boop, boop. I mean, if we go boop, boop, we should just have the game. Pieces of the puzzle. Digging deep. <laughs> Bedlam Reveler. Uh, take inventory, Tattered Haunter, Drag Under. Have I mentioned how much I love draft leagues for mirror matches? <laughs> um, okay, so he's getting a take inventory and a drag under. So he's going to drag under my griff, I guess. I need to get beep boop commands, actually, squirrel. Yeah, drag is definitely a bit brutal. He's going to combat, though. Drag under's a sorcery. Okay. Okay. Slightly confused. Um, well, he's going to save the niblet. Or no, this is a sorcery as well. Did we just blow him out? What does he have? Convolute doesn't do it. <laughs> Once you have the beep command, you know you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. Someday. Someday I'll get the beep commands. What does he have? Spontaneous mutation. So that's going to save the Nibblus. Okay. I guess. I still have a good blocker. 
boop and I think we still just boop the nibbles. Doesn't make much sense to boop the mangler. And then He needs a couple of spells. So if he has Borrowed Hostility. Give that first strike. Still doesn't kill the Reveler. Or no, it would because it would become a four. Too late to flip the Gargoyle, unfortunately. I missed that. Um, I guess we just kind of say, hey, can you show us the trick? So this leaves plenty of blocks. Yeah, show us the trick. Show me the trick. Good trick. Take three. I like that trick. So then, end of turn, we can flip the werewolf or the gargoyle after his drag under opportunity passes him by. Take inventory, sure. <laughs> Don't think attack with everyone. Seems like good, good advice. All right. What did you have in your inventory? I'm really excited to do the Kaladesh crackbacks. I'm happy I got the, uh, the card recognition software working. Way too conservative? I could see it. I could see it. I just don't like how many cards he had in hand. Weaver of Lightning, sure. So he cast that take inventory. He's got a single blue. We're gonna flip werewolf. Fortune's favor. Eh, why not? Prowess. And let's see what we get. So what are our attacks going to be? We're going to fly in with, I guess, nothing really. That stupid weaver. Dreadwolf comes in. We may just have lethal. Um, we flip this. He blocks this, this, and this. And he takes three, four, five, six, seven. We don't quite have lethal. Fevered Visions and an a, a Island or two other cards. I mean, Fevered Visions is going to, like, kill him quickly, but that seems... Seems bad giving him a bunch of cards. Let's see what the Mystery Door is. Two creatures. I like it. Um, all right. Send the entire team? Really? He blocks that. Trades. What's he representing? What's he representing? He's representing turn aside. And that's about it. All right. All right. Let's do it. Oh, I forgot to flip the gargoyle. Damn it. Stupid punts. Punts left, right, and center. Um, in, in, in. 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 Yeah, in with all, because we've got board to uh, fill up. So, hey, we got there. Cool. Uh, <laughs> all we had to do was actually attack. Turn aside, get in there. Gar gargoyle, out you go. Catalog, no. Take inventory, no. Neonate. I think that's it. I think that's it. Ooh, 
We could take out the Fortune's Favor and keep the Gargoyle in. It's got a lot of two power flyers though. No, let's go with that. Yeah, their deck looks really good. It looks like maybe they're potentially missing like um, the Alchemist and whatnot as well. I guess he has the Weaver. Um, but this seems like a good hand. I'll keep our opponent's mold to six. Five, five, five. Five? Four? Do it. Oh, he kept his five. Scribe to the bottom. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Mountain, go ahead. What do we get to kill? Something good, I hope. Nope. Wretched Griff. Niblis. No more. Hey, hey, Niblis of our own. Sweet. Probably do researcher first, just in case we can get the blind flip. Sweet. I plan on not emerging versus drag under that deck. Good call. Good call. All right, we might just get there if they miss another land. Drag under? Mangler! But I planned on attacking. At least we've got turn aside to protect our Niblis now. Land off the top. Sweet. Let's play the island. Tap, 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 tap. Super gas. <clears throat> what you got? Drag under? I don't think so. Tap your mangler. Bash in for a minimum of six, potentially eight next turn. Seems good. Oh, he did have a land. I was all in on the land screw plan. Land off the top, land on top anyways. In for six. Ah, spontaneous mutation. Pretty good, pretty good. Pretty good. In for four. There's a desperation mutation though. So next turn we can just hard cast the griff, I guess. Hmm. What you got? Mad profit. Yeah, we could just emerge off the researcher. I mean, if it flips, it's still going to be three power in the air for the time being. Oh, no, he's going to quickly fill his graveyard. Never mind. Whew. Spreading flames. Glad to see that go away. It's down to one card in hand. Makes our fevered vision a lot worse. Oh, and it finally flips. <laughs> oh, Magic Online. It's like you can hear my every word. So I think we... We can... Hmm. We get Fevered Visions, get a Prowess Trigger, hit him for six. Take him to ten. Emerge the Griff. Keep up Scrutiny. Blue... What is this? Four? Blue one, boop. Blue one, blue one two. Yeah, we just keep up scrutiny. The vision's 
trigger is never going to hurt him, not with one card in hand. But he's also just dead in a couple of turns because of flyers. Let's go for it. Prowess trigger. Hit him for six. Drop the griff. Draw a card. Bedlam Reveler. We've got three, so it's red, red, three. Seems good. Seems good. So if we don't use Scrutiny here, which we almost definitely will not, uh, we could use it on our turn, hit him for seven, take him to three. Probably don't need to do that though. He's digging deep. I think we just have this one. I'd be shocked if we don't. Thermal Alchemist, he does have one. Doesn't do anything against our flyers, though. Fever mm -hmm. Visions, draw your card. Mountain, of course. Um, I mean, I kind of want that Reveler. So if I scrutiny here just for a Prowess Trigger slash to make the Reveler cheaper, it would go down to... Red, red, two. We'd have two mana left. Which we could use to crack the clue. Tap the profit. Yeah. Stops a card draw for him. Yeah, I like that. In, in. Scrutiny that. Tap that. Tap that. Take him to three. Drop a reveler. Discard our mountain. Draw. Several ways of winning the game. Cool. Seems good. Seems good. And another scrutiny just for good luck. I think we have it. I think we have it. I mean, worst comes to worst, we can tap something down this turn and drop a duelist if he somehow clears everything, right? Weaver of Lightning. So what you're representing here? You're going to ping me, and then you're going to cast something. No? Okay, you're going to adjust the wind that. So in that case, I'm going to scrutiny, tap down the Mangler, drop the Duelist, and we win a billion different ways anyways. A billion different ways anyways. But let's win this way with a ton of triggers. Oh, I guess that on taps. Still. We have three in the air. <laughs> or no, he can block that actually, never mind. But we still just win with the duelist. Duelist. Weaver can't block. Ping me for one. Weaver can't block. He's hoping for that misclick. 
Attack with all. No misclicks here. All right, we got there. We're one to zero. Uh, I will be back in a quick second, and then we'll do round two. I'm not sure if we'll do all round, all three rounds or not. That took a surprisingly long time, and I do want to get to uh, testing out crack -a packs as well as uh, a non-magic game just to make sure it all kind of works. But I'll be back in a second. Right, let's play another. Hopefully not another blue-red mirror match. That's the plan anyways. I will play first, yes for sure. Hey, that's not terrible. In fact, that's quite good. I will keep. Drop a mountain past the turn. <laughs> Halfway to the mirror match. Terrarian. Okay. Whew. If we hit the land, we're going to do one heck of a solid uh, sequence here. Why wouldn't it be another blue-red deck? Ho, <laughs> ho. Yeah, this is going to be good. Raise the wolves, down you go. What you got for us? Nothing. That smells like a convolute. Oh, bombardment number two. Um, well, show me what your plan is. Jace's scrutiny. Sure. Can this hit players? Can only hit creatures. That's a pain. That is a pain. Um, so. Thanks, Garbos. Thanks for stopping by. Um, so he's an 03. It's not good. Zero damage. Um, I really don't want to waste that trigger. I kind of just like doing a make mischief and holding up a bombardment here. Take one. How good is your blue-red deck? That good, eh? 
Um, okay, so you're terrarianing. Two red. Tormenting voice. Alchemist greeting, so. Brays and wolves are gonna bite it. It's fine. No biggie. I mean, mild biggie, but no real biggie. <sighs> I mean, he's just not going to ever have like better targets now, right? There's not going to be X1 sitting over there. Yeah, let's drop it. No damage to creatures. <laughs> oh, the mirrors. Drownyard explorers. I can't bombardment those. Pass? <laughs> I could send my devil in and then bombardment it. That's better on defense. Ah, oh, it's terrible. White splash. Please don't be splashing for anything too gross. Splash for Thraben Inspector. Mercurial Geists. You should attack for two. Do it. Do it. Oh, I didn't do it. Stitched Mangler. Let's tap ourselves some Geists. Pass the turn. Need to get my flyers online. Need an aberrant researcher. Wretched Griff. Really anything would be good right about now. Scarecrow. You got a scarecrow. Scab number two. Pass the turn. Clue, sure. Not necessarily where I want to be on turn four. Or turn eight. It's double four. All right, what's coming down? Three. Four. Gonna make it a five. Savage Alliance. So you're dealing two to scab and one to all. So if I, I don't really want to cast a bombardment just yet. Although actually I could cast a bombardment hitting the Geists. The devil will die and that'll kill the Geists off. Let's do that. One to that, that'll save the scab. Devil will kill the Geist, so he won't get that trigger anymore. So really, he just killed a devil. 
He killed a devil and his own geists. I will accept that turn. If it comes in with the Scarecrow, I might even scrutiny and kill it with the Scab. Don't think he'll get that greedy though. That would be really greedy. Well, if we're gonna get him, we're gonna get him. Get him? Got him. Hey, Fakey, how's it going? Crack a clue. Well, we are suddenly rather back in this game. I will also crack a clue. Gargoyle and a mage. Sweet. I will get in for two. Drop a mage. Drop a gargoyle, hold up a bombardment. You've got a snowball? Awesome. It's a handy mic. I don't like it as much. I use the Yeti for a lot of my recording, uh, but the Yeti won't hang on this uh, boom arm. It's too heavy, the snowball does though. The Yeti just has so many more gain controls and whatnot on it. Ew, werewolf. Well, it doesn't kill anything. And I can just kill it with a bombardment. Seems fine. You're not even dealing another... Po okay. You could have. Yeah, the, the Yeti is just gigantic. All right, so this is one dead smoldering werewolf. This guy just has my deck. <laughs> Except my werewolf went to the graveyard a lot sooner. All right. So, you do nothing. You don't have haste or anything. Although I'd still probably really like to play you rather than pop in the gargoyle this turn. In with team. Get in for three. Yeah, we're doing draft league right now, Fakey. This is uh, match two. We are 1-0. and uh, I don't know if we're going to do match three or not tonight. We might if this one goes fast enough. Um, but after this, we're going to crack a couple packs of Kaladesh. I've got the... Whoa. That's a pack of Kaladesh on the floor. Um, I've got the LRR card recognition software working, so it'll show the card up. Uh, should be good. And then after that, we might try a match of Dead by Daylight or maybe some Rocket League or something. Uh, I basically just need to test out everything um, that I'm going to be doing for my 24-hour stream uh, November 5th. Scour. You got it. So Breakneck is not going to flip with him with a hand of five cards. But we can flip Gargoyles. Weaver. That's gross. That uh, slows us down a whole lot. more things stop playing things <laughs> he 
imprisoned in the moon. Uh, yeah. See ya, gargoyle. You're a moon now. Well, we're still in an okay spot. Ugh. I guess I can't even really attack now though, right? Because he can just double block. Well, we flip the rider, I suppose. Give everything plus one, pl plus one, plus oh, and trample when they attack. That is no moon. Geist, sure, get all of the value. So I need to draw some gas and not lands. Sure, take two. That makes my attacks look a little bit better next turn. Slash a lot bit better. Uncaged Fury, sure. You're not dealing 20 to me, I don't think. Six? I'll take six. Well, I guess he cast two cards. I guess that's the plan. Flip my neck breaker. Still. I don't know that I would have done that. Um, yeah, he's got one card in hand. Hope it's a good one. Hope it's a good one. Block the scab, block that, take two. Uh, we could just kill the weaver. I think I'm actually pretty okay just killing the weaver. If he has a spell, he gets to kill the scab in response, though. Hmm. <laughs> no. If you have the spell, show me the spell. I will trade this scab for your weaver. No spell. Sweet. So we could flip the berserker or drop a whelp. He's going to get a scry, so he's going to get into value. Let's flip the breakneck rider here. Because it's going to make everything much more threatening. And if he doesn't have a creature, then the breakneck, or the neck breaker as it is now known as, uh, can just get through. He's thinking about that scry. Or no, he's not even scrying yet. There we go. On the top. On the top. What was it? No, really. What was it? I mean, obviously, it's something that's going to get me right here, right? In? Is it just the wind? Is it a borrowed hostility? What is happening? <laughs> um, okay. I will drop... Whoops, don't want to do that. Uh, yeah, let's hold up our turn aside that's not in our deck. He scried something to the top, and then it didn't 
stop him from dropping to eight? Dual shot. Okay. I don't feel like that was worth it. <laughs> To the top. All right. Ingenious scab. Sure. My fly is going to get you. Ooh, duelist. So we duelist the scab. He blocks the duelist. He takes three, four, five, six. Goes to two. Sweet. I like it. Team. Take him to two. We drop a scab of our own. And that's going to be game. Three one pre release. Awesome. Glad to hear Ruckus. What did that uh net you prize support wise? Hey, we got there. Um We saw some reasons for turn aside. Yeah, let's pitch the Fever visions? Now let's pitch the gargoyle for a turn aside. Go with that. Um okay. Okay, this is This is a hand of seven cards. Austin, you also went through one. Awesome. Eight packs and a foil gear hulk. Awesome. All right, um, hmm, past the turn. I have too many three drops. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Two, two, and one was a buy. Oh, that's a shame, Admiral Rar. <laughs> I was so happy that I got the round one buy. I thought my deck was going to just absolutely be the worst thing ever. Um, so, of course, I went 4-0 and and then draw, draw. Um, yeah. Weaver of Lightning. So, Fevered Visions will start hitting him for two. Um, but it's really going to fill his hand up. I will use the horrible justification of it being game two. And I'm up a game. So, we're going to try it out. We're going to see how it goes. Probably wasn't the best move. But we're going to see how it goes. Uh, follow that up with an aberrant researcher, I suppose. In for one, you got it. This is draw and then? Yes, draw and then. Sure. Four or more? Yeah, take two. Um, so I don't think anything's changed. Yeah, we're just going to drop a researcher. We've got two of our spells. We could still semi likely blind flip this. Twice you went two drop copter, three drop chief, hit for cheese. That is gross. <laughs> How is my researcher dying? Painfully? Painfully. Geist blasted. Opponent's still going to take two off the visions. I'm liking the race. He can hit me for one. I'll 
Visions him for two. Bedlam Reveler. Well, that wasn't going to flip a uh, researcher. So, we can Breakneck Rider, keep up Scrutiny, or drop a Sanguinary Mage. I see no real reason to keep up Scrutiny, so let's drop the Mage. Draw a card. Oh, what you doing? Oh, gross. Goodbye, Breakneck. All right, so odds are Fever Visions is now just a total bonus for him. He's not going to get hit for two. Although I guess Terrarian's looking a little bit worse now. In for one? Yeah, show me the trick. I don't buy it. Slash, if you want to use a trick to kill a mage, I'm really okay with that. Don't cast anything. Take another two. Ah. It's a savage alliance again? Smoldering werewolf. Crud. That's problematic. We need a bombardment on top. Or else. Dual shot. Wow! That was a lot of work to kill that mage. Come on, bombardment. If I don't get it, I lose. Deranged whelp. So, we need something that'll live through the werewolf. I guess that's ingenious scab, and then we can hold up scrutiny. We'll make it slightly bigger, but still not big enough. That'll drop that to a two power, but this will already have taken two. Hmm. This looks rather bad. Rather bad. Um, we're not going to Fortune's Favor. We just die. Can't Wretched Griff. Can't Reveler. Make Mischief doesn't do it. Yep. Scab, and I guess hope that we hit um, Bombardment off the Visions trigger. Turn aside. Hmm, not gonna get it. Oops. I guess we just have to take six this turn. Terrarian, draw yourself a card. I assume this is just a flip of the werewolf, right? Yep. Flip of the wolf. <sighs> Okay. We just have to take six here. Hopefully he deals two to the scab. He does deal two to me. Okay. So that means that scab can actually live through blocking. But what does that do? Buys us time, I guess. Let's block. 
Let's scrutinize. He's going to take two off visions. There is that. Duelist. Not what I want. So. I believe we just passed the turn. Get a scab. Discard. Deranged whelp. So we can again try to clue to try to get um, a bombardment to deal three to the Dreadwolf. What's this going to be? I can also pump the scab to make it a 4-1 if he does deal two to me. And that'll kill the wolf. There are options. There are options, I suppose. Please don't kill the scab. Go into attacks, okay, okay. You're gonna hit me, you're gonna hit the scab. You're gonna hit me. Interesting. So I can try to fortune's favor. Actually, yeah, because I can block with the scab. I can fortune's favor to make it a 3-4. Oh, but no, I need to... Uh, what is the white splash for? I don't think we've seen yet. No, I don't think we've seen anything for the uh, white splashes for. Uh, so the issue with the fortune's favor is I need to tap a red or a blue. If I tap the red and I hit Bombardment, I can't just use it. If I tap the blue and I don't hit Bombardment, then I can't pump the scab. All right, what's Fortune's Favor? Let's Fortune's Favor with the intention of pumping, because the pump we know is on the table. The Bombardment may just not be. Let's see what we get. <clears throat> and then the hope, of course, is that he just tries to cast a spell on my scab and I can turn it aside. Scab still dies, but kills the wolf and the game changes a little bit. Let's see how much my opponent's going to try to next, next level me. <laughs> Bombardment or three cards? I think I just want the three cards because I can't do the bombardment right now. Yeah, give me the three. What are they? Ah! <laughs> oh. I could have gone better. Well, we're going to pump the scab. And we're going to kill that wolf. You have something? Oh, scrutiny. So wrecked. All of the wrecked. Just all of the wrecked. Well, take two. Nibbles, you are really helpful, but I need one more blue. For the turn aside, um, what can I do? I have one, two, three. So this is red, red, three. But then I discard my entire hand. Um, we could make mischief and drop a scab. Hmm. 
Niblis. Hmm. Yeah, let's make mischief. Uh, you take one. You take one. There we go. Niblis. Or, not Niblis. Uh, mischief. So we can deal two to that. We can pretend that we have a bombardment in hand. Or we can just drop the scab. And let's just drop the scab. Draw a card, mountain. Discard, a mountain. Hmm. The moon? No. So I will take two. Or are you just going to kill the devil? Just killing the devil makes more sense, actually. A lot more sense. Yep. So I take seven, go to seven. Not great. Not great. Deal one to you. Seven down to seven. Scab, sure. Stitched Mangler, that helps out. Stitched Mangler, tap down the Dreadwolf. That's step one. Step two might just be emerge the Griff. Yeah. Yeah, emerge the Griff. Draw a card. Bombardment? Smoldering Werewolf of my own. Pass the turn. And hopefully not die. Draw a card. Tattered Hunter. Cool. Hmm. I'm really curious what this white's for. I mean, I'd probably rather not see. Because it's probably pretty good. Scarecrow, sure. I do not see a great way out of this game. <laughs> Drown Yard Explorer, sure. I mean, I really need to start going off with nibbles here. Had a dominant board state with two removal spells in hand. Is it a is take not to loot? Is it a mistake not to loot? Almost always you loot. Almost always. Hey, there we go. Let's drop a nibbles. Hold up turn aside. Then we can also drop a smoldering werewolf. Seems good. Um, we can't kill anything, unfortunately. And our werewolf dies to his werewolf. And we just hit a mountain. Yeah, generally you want to loot because even with the two removal spells in hand, whatever you draw, if it's somehow better than the removal, you keep it and you throw away a removal. And if it's not, you just throw it away. Um, it's definitely a hard lesson to learn the first time. It, it does feel kind of weird, but you almost always loot. Uh, there was, if you, if you missed it, there was a large large Twitter war over it uh, a couple months ago. Just go into uh, LSV's Twitch channel and ask if you should always loot or not. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's uh, 
That's a card you splash for, I guess. I guess. Bloody hell. Um, so what's he going to hit? Visions? My clue? Oh, no, the artifact has to be tapped, but he could exile visions. Otherwise, he's just going to draw. All right, so let's win the game, game three, before Nahiri comes down. Sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan to me. I was really hoping he was going to cast something targeting Niblos. Uh, we're just dead, aren't we? Kills the werewolf. We are just dead, right? Block, block. We take three, four, five, six. Oh, we're not, we're not exactly dead. We are pretty darn close. Oops. So that makes us not dead. I guess we have haste on the duelist, and if we had haste on one other thing, we could maybe somehow miraculously kill him. Oh, we're dead to the scab. <laughs> of course we're dead to the scab. Uh, yeah. That was a bad match. Um, boy, we're just playing against our deck. <sighs> I feel like he's the beatdown more than I am. So maybe a Convolute could come in. Convolute over a Make Mischief. Let's give that a try. Whoa. I submitted the 41 card special. Sweet. Uh, I'll play first. Yep, I will keep that. Boy, will I ever. We could also potentially just time our opponent out. There is always that. One drop Terrarian, sure. Sanguinary Mage, taste it. Splash color. Terrarian for your blue. What you gonna do? <laughs> terrarian number two. Oh, no Terrarian number three. You wasted a mana. In for one. He's splashing hard for that Nahiri. Double Terrarian. Terrarian! Casting. An island. Tormenting voice. What's happening here? There's a lot of things happening without anything actually happening. Oh, damn it, deck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to walk into a Nahiri next turn, aren't I? That's what's going to happen. Play a land. Drop Nahiri. Kill my mage. There you go. There you go. Thanks, deck. It was a good run. It was a good run. But, you know. There's those days where magic just tells you you're not allowed to play. This is one of those days. Discard a dual shot. Pass the turn, sure. Pass the turn. What you got? Smoldering werewolf. Well, I'm gonna kill that. I'm gonna kill that hard. I want a Voldaren Duelist to be on top. Want slash need. Ugh. Uh, turn off auto yields. And step bombard. Gyatcha. Come on! <sighs> Bloody hell. Have we drawn a card that's not a land this game? We haven't, right? 
I don't think we have. <sighs> Flip your wolf. I will throw the good old scrutiny on it. Hey, we got a follow. Bonesaw Wizard, thanks for the follow. Bad time to follow. Bad time to follow with this uh, land flood. Aberrant Researcher. You snap die to the Dread Wolf. Rummage, sure thing. Convolute. This doesn't cast it, does it? Just puts it on the battlefield. Uh, well, let's drop the researcher. Even though, snap dies to the dread wolf. Maybe, maybe he spends so long looking through his library with the Nahiri ultimate that he times out. That is our new strategy. Goodbye, researcher. It was lovely knowing you. You weren't terribly effective at your research. Take six. I don't even have a permanent for turn aside. Yeah, you're not casting that. No. N O. Rummage, you got it. Bedlam Reveler. Why not? And we draw. Three lands. Well, two lands and a scrutiny. Which actually will finally save me against the Dread Wolf. If he doesn't just snap kill the Reveler somehow. Mercurial Geists. Hasty Flyer. Sure. Come on! How? How does he have all the answers? I'm going to scrutiny. I'm going to crack that clue. Then I'm going to concede. Smoldering werewolf. Sweet. All right. Well, that game sucked. Um, yeah, we'll jam out match three. Hopefully it's not against another blue red deck because I'm really sick of this <laughs> I'm blue red match one was blue red match two was blue red we'll see if match three is blue red and my monitor is going wacky so let me hit the cord I'm gonna have to figure out if I need a new monitor and a new display adapter or what all right so after this match we're gonna crack some packs of Kaladesh and play a quick uh, I think a quick match of dead by, dead by daylight I think that's what we'll go with Oh, the dreaded match three when you're one and one. We win and we get packs, or we lose and we get nothing. All right. Let's make this one speedy. No go into two minutes. I will play first. I will keep this hand. It's not the worst. It's actually pretty decent. Pretty decent. All right, let's drop that mountain. So yeah, anybody who's not aware, uh, I will be doing a 24-hour stream. Hey, we're not against Blue Red. Uh, November 5th, National Extra Life Game Day. It'll be probably about half magic, probably about 12 hours at least will be magic. Um, the rest will be Rocket League, Dead by Daylight, Choice Chamber, Quiplash, all kinds of various video games. So make sure you check that out. And it will all be fundraising for the Children's Health Foundation here in London, the Children's Hospital. In for two. How greedy do I get? Do I drop the visions? Let's drop the visions. Nibbles. I 
And if you're not familiar with the YouTube channel, you should go there because I'm primarily a YouTube content creator, uh, youtube.com slash themanaleek. And you'll find everything that I've got going on there. Wailing Ghoul, Eternal Scourge, and a forest. You're going to take the Scourge? Unless you really want Delirium to be online, in which case you might take the Ghoul. What's it going to be? The Scourge. Sounds good. News Constrictor. Sure. So you're going to take two. I can swing in for two. Um, I can drop Nibbles. Nibbles or a Scab. In for two. Hopefully Nibbles doesn't snap die to a uh, Prey Upon or something. Do I want to drop a Scab instead? Not really. Well, no. Yeah, let's do it. Draw an island. All right. I guess we don't have the turn aside main deck anyways. So he can turn off the fevered visions whenever he wants with the news constrictor, I suppose. I'll take two. You can discard stuff if you want. Discard a swamp, sure. Discard another swamp, sure. Forest, sure. He is not wanting to get hit by fever divisions. Somberwald stag, gross. Gross. I don't think we're beating this deck. This deck is pretty good. Um. Well, let's drop the wolf and see if it can live. Let's see if we can live a turn. We hit a Jace's scrutiny. So we can nibbles and scrutiny to tap something down. In for two. You can't have that much that you're willing to discard. I'm gonna block. And if you wanna go down to one, I'm okay with that. Pump. Man, he's flooded out. <laughs> okay. He was willing to go down to one card in hand. And it's a hermit. Couldn't you have killed the stag by playing it? Blue mana, giving it three. Uh, no, he fought the deranged whelp, not the ingenious scab. Um, yeah, so I think we're gonna drop Nibbles and hold up scrutiny. Seems better than flipping the werewolf because the werewolf doesn't kill anything outside of the captive. Let's drop Nibbles. Stitched Mangler, all right. The tap plans are working. We do have to have him draw a card off of Jace's Scrutiny if we cast it on his turn, which is a slight pain. Midnight Scavengers getting back. Scourge? I assume Scourge. Yep. A Scourge. So he's got one card in hand, he'll have two cards in hand, three cards in hand at the end of the turn. Coming in with the Somberwald Stag. Welp. 
We are gonna block it. And I know what you have in hand, so we're gonna Jace's Scrutiny the Stag, and we're gonna tap down the Constrictor. No, we're going to tap down the scavengers. You can draw a card, that's fine. I will investigate. Kill your stag. Draw a card. Storm Rider Spirit, eh? So now we can Mangler, tap the Constrictor, get in for three. I guess he might just flip the captive, which will be a problem. And then we can drop Breakneck Rider? Yeah, let's do that. Do I watch any other magic YouTubers? Uh, I watch Gabby pretty regularly and LSV, uh, Kenji here and there, loading ready run quite a bit. Which I suppose aren't YouTubers, necessarily. I just named a bunch of Twitch streams that I watch. Uh, YouTubers, I don't watch too, too many explicitly. Not terribly offhand. I'm often too busy making my own YouTubes. So he's going to flip his hermit. Okay, that's fine. Flip my breakneck rider though. Let's see if we can get a spell for tapping down the captive. Spell, 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 mountain. It's less than ideal. This doesn't get reach or anything though. Hmm. So. He's not just dead, right? If he flips this, green, green, one, two, three, four, five. He flips this. He takes one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, he takes lethal. I'm at 15. I'm willing to give it a go. I'm willing to give this a go. We may get blown out. But I'll give it a go. Please, no clear shot. Two to your face. Down to seven. Hey, we got there. Cool. All right, game two. See no reason to bring in turn aside or anything. Um, I think we just go right back in. And then after this, we'll do the crack packs, and then a quick match of uh, Dead by Daylight. Man, our opponent is sideboarding. A 
really sideboarding. Jeez. I wonder if we're just going to see an entirely different deck or something. What's Marshall been doing on these? 14. That's not many. There we go. So, what'd you do to your deck? Or did you just walk away from your computer? All right, that's a lot of three drops and nothing else. It's capable. If my opponent ramps out, we might be in trouble. So let's hope they don't do that or that I hit a uh, bombardment. Ooh, no green. That's what I like to see. All right. Let's see if we can get a Breakneck Rider to flip. Not that lucky, but we do get the free attack. Drop a Scab, pass the turn. If he misses a land drop here, we just win. Yep, we just won. <laughs> That went a lot faster than I expected. Uh, yeah, so we won. Cool. Uh, we are going to crack some packs of Kaladesh here using LRR's fancy card recognition software. Just need to do a couple quick setups and we'll be good to go. Um, the quality of the camera will decrease because I'm going to start running it through a, uh, a webcam splitter. But the card recognizer will put it up in a nice clear display. So we're going to switch on over to this display. And that's going to require me to open up the splitter. So you currently can't see anything, but now you can see me again. There we go. And now I'm going to have to open a couple more things. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. So for anybody who hasn't seen me do crack packs on YouTube, uh, I don't just open the pack and go, hey, look what I have and you don't. Haha. -ha. I open the packs and I talk about what would I would take in a draft. You know, I, I get some actual uh, discussion going on there. Uh, so let me open up the card utility. Let's set up the hook. Let's get this so it's actually showing the right thing. There we go. And then we need to open up the other program. We need to load Kaladesh and Kaladesh Inventions because I'm feeling lucky. And we go like that. And then we're going to open this pack and see what's in there. Up first, we have ourselves Aether Trade wins. Two and a blue for an instant. Return target permanent you control and target permanent you don't control to their owner's hands. I like Aether Trade wins. It's totally fine. It works well. It's never a first pick, but, you know, it's fine. But never a first pick, so it's not really in the discussion. Next up, we have ourselves a our Reckless Fire Weaver. Uh, Reckless Fire Weaver, one and a red, creature human artificer, one three. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, Reckless Fire Weaver deals one damage to each opponent. I want to see a deck built around this. 
I want it to exist, but I just don't feel like it's consistent enough to really get there. That being said, it's a common that nobody's really going to go out of their way to want. So if you want to go deep in this deck, you can give it a shot. And I probably will at some point, but not a first pick. Up next, we've got ourselves Herald of the Fair. Herald of the Fair, two and a white for a creature, human, three, two. When Herald of the Fair enters the battlefield, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. It's a three, two for three. Totally fine. Gives plus one, plus one till end of turn. Also fine. Um, you can make your 2-2 two, two for two that you play at a 3-3. Three, three. It's just fine. It's not a first pick, though, ever. The pack would have to be ridiculously bad. Up next, we've got ourselves a Cowl Prowler. Vanilla 6-6 six, six for six. Don't play it, really. If you, if you need a top end, here you go. If you don't, don't play it. Not a first pick. Hopefully we get a first pick at some point. I mean, this we could first pick. Live fast. Live fast. Two and a black for a sorcery. You draw two cards. You lose two life. You get two energy. I like doing all of those. Well, I don't like losing life, but I'll pay two life for two cards and two energy. Um, yeah, this is fine. Don't go ham on them. Uh, I played somebody in the pre-release who played three of these back-to-back, -back, and they died very young because uh, they had taken six damage. Um, but yeah, the first one's totally fine. The second one, well, I don't know when I would play it. Maybe in a super control -y deck. Up next, we've got ourselves, hey, live fast, die young, right beside each other. Die young's a first pickable card. Uh, one and a black for a sorcery. Choose target creature, you get two energy, then you may pay any amount of energy. The creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn for each energy paid this way. Very important note when you're playing this card, do not tell your opponent how much energy you're spending. Say, I'm casting die young, targeting whatever. Then they have to say whether or not it resolves. They have to respond. They have to pump it if they want to before you tell them how much energy is being used to actually kill it. That way, if you are trying to kill a 2-2 and you get two energy and they giant growth it and it's a 5-5, you spend no energy and you just pocket that two energy. Make sure you do play it that way. Uh, you're losing value if you don't. Uh, but yeah, Die Young is in the conversation for first pick. Up next, whoa, we are throwing the cards. We've got a self-assembler. Self-Assembler, five generic mana for a 4-4 four, four artifact creature assembly worker. When Self-Assembler enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an assembly worker. This is the only assembly worker in the entire format. Uh, it's a 4-4. Four, four. Uh, you get to reveal and put that assembly worker into your hand. Um, yeah, I don't like these. I mean, they're a 4-4 four, four for five. So again, they're in this sort of, if you need a top end here. But I don't know. I saw somebody who had four of these in their pre-release pack. I saw somebody who had three. And, you know, it's nice to guarantee yourself drawing a card, but I don't see myself playing these very often. Certainly never a first pick. Up next, we've got ourselves a Gear Seeker Serpent. Gear Seeker Serpent, five blue blue for a creature serpent, five six. Uh, it has affinity for artifacts, so it costs one less mana for each artifact that you control. Pay five and a blue, Gear Seeker Serpent can't be blocked this turn. I was more down on this card than other people were, and... I don't know. I'm going to have to see how it performs in draft. I had it in both my pools, and both my pools had so few playable artifacts that I couldn't justify playing this. I think you really need to make sure that you are getting at least a two mana discount on this reliably. Um, at full price, I'm not super into this. If Kaladesh turns out to be a pretty slow draft format, and I'm not sold that it's going to be, despite how slow the uh, pre-release format is. Remember, pre-release formats are always slow. Um, this could be good. But if it's fast it's not going to be quite as good. You're not going to guarantee that you're going to get yourself to that six mana to be uh, making this unblockable. That being said, at least this early in the format, it's possibly a first pickable card. We'll see. Up next, I think this is our last common, Fire at Forger's Puzzle Knot. Puzzle Knots are bad. Two generic mana for an artifact, enters the battlefield, deals a damage to target creature player, pay two and a red, sack it, do it again. I don't like it. I don't like any of the Puzzle Knots. I would begrudgingly play the white one, the red one, certainly not. This is way too much mana for way too little damage. Nope, we have one more common. Renegade Tactics. Renegade Tactics, single red mana for a sorcery. Target creature can't block this turn. Draw a card. No, just no. Um, if it was target creature uh, can't be blocked, it would be fantastic. Well, not fantastic. That's a strong word. It would be good. Um, target creature can't block this turn. Really requires your opponent to have, you know, like one creature on their board or you're, you're trying to get a flyer through, which is weird in red, so your other color must have a flyer. I don't know. I just don't see a place for this card. I don't think I'll play it very often. Certainly never first pick it. 
first uncommon is a good one. And the recognition software was having issues there. Uh, Wispweaver Angel. Four white white for a creature angel at uncommon. It's a 4-4 four, four flyer when it enters the battlefield to get to flicker something. I did play this in my pre-release and it was really good. Again, you're going to need to make sure that you can get to six mana. So it's going to kind of depend on how fast the format is. That being said, this is just a powerful card. 4-4 four, four flyer that can flicker your fabricate creature or flicker some awesome end of the battlefield effect. Flicker your uh, cloud blazer. Tons of cool stuff that can be done with this. Ever so slightly expensive, but I still think uh, I would first pick it, and I think it's in the conversation for first pick in this pack. Next on common is one I do not like, Inventor's Apprentice. Single red mana for a creature, human artificer, 1-2. It gets plus 1, plus 1 as long as you control an artifact. No. I'm not playing 1-2s for 1. Yeah, it could be a 2-3 for 1 if you somehow hit that you know artifact on turn 2. But if you don't, you know, when is this becoming a 2-3? It's becoming a 2-3 turn 4? Turn 5? At which point, who cares that it was a 2-3? Who cares if you played 1 mana or 2 mana for it? It's not really a big deal. I don't like Inventor's Pre Impre bleh, Apprentice. I don't think I'm ever uh, first picking it. I don't think I'm ever playing it either. Our final uncommon is Whirler Maker. And I need to jostle my monitor cord. Hopefully someday I fix that. Uh, Whirler Maker, three generic mana for an artifact, four generic mana, tap it, make a Thopter. Way too much mana, way too much dirtling around for me. Not really what I want to be doing. Come on, monitor. Luckily you guys can't see that, but my second monitor just goes green and pink and all kinds of crazy stuff happens. I think a, a wire might actually be broke in the monitor cable itself. Our rare is a Metalwork Colossus, and we don't have a... Uh, Invention, unfortunately. Metalwork Colossus, 11 generic mana for a 10-10. It costs X less to cast, where X is the total converted mana cost of non-creature artifacts you control. Sack two artifacts, return from your graveyard to your hand. I don't like that part. I do like, hey, thanks, Marco. Hey, it is Marco. Uh, for the mic, the mic is a blue snowball. It looks like a snowball. Um, yeah, Metalwork Colossus, I like it the first time it comes down. I don't necessarily like sacking two artifacts to get it back to my hand to recast it because then you don't get the converted mana cost discount for that. Eh, not a big fan of that. Um, that being said, getting a 10-10 potentially on turn 5, turn 6, depending on how it goes. The downside is it has to be non-creature artifacts. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have to play with Metalwork Colossus. I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, I'm thinking that the four cards to kind of think about are the Wisp Weaver, or er, the Metalwork Colossus, the Die Young. Die Young, come on. Come on. Camera. The Die Young. The Gear Seeker Serpent. And the Wisp Weaver Angel. And out of those four, I think I'm probably just going for the... Uh, you think you sack Servo for the Metal Worker. Yeah, obviously, sacking Servos would be the best plan. But, you know, you don't always get to do your best plan in draft. You don't always get to do that. I don't know. What would you guys pick out of this pack? Die Young, Serpent, Wisp Weaver, Metal Work Colossus. I think I'm going for the... I think Die Young's probably the most correct. I think, like, tomorrow night, I'm going for the Wisp Weaver Angel. Anyways, let me know what you guys would have picked from that pack. And we're going to do one more crack pack before we do a game of Dead by Daylight. Pack number two. Motorist, Adam, you're both on Wisp Weaver. Good choice. Good choice. All right, pack number two of Kaladesh. Up first, we have ourselves a Nimble Innovator. Nimble Innovator, Innovator, three and a blue for a creature, Vidalcan Artificer, two, two. Enters the battlefield, draw a card. This is identical to a card whose name I forgot. Somerwald Sage? Something like that from M15 or Origins. It's fine. It's a 2-2 two -two for 4, which is overcosted, but you draw a card, which is fine. Like, it's a fine card. You'll probably usually play it when you're blue. You'll never, ever first pick it. Up next, we've got ourselves a Spontaneous Artist. Spontaneous Artist, 3 and a red for a creature human rogue. 3-3, three, three, enters the battlefield, you get energy. Uh, pay energy. Target creature gains haste until end of turn. I like this. It's, you know, it's better than a 2-2 two -two for 4. It's a 3-3 three -three for 4. You get the energy. You can pay it to give it haste. You can give it haste right away. So it's a 3-3 three -three haste for 4, which is fine. We have a 3-3 three -three haste for 3 in this set. 
but it's that uncommon. And then if you don't want to give this haste, you can give something else haste. Give your flyer haste, give your big bomb haste. I like it. I don't think you ever first pick it, but I do like it. Probably just rare draft the Colossus. I could see that. Sick of drafting black. It's so mediocre in draft. Um, we'll see how mediocre it is in Kaladesh. I think it's better than it was in Eldritch Moon. Up next, we've got ourselves a built to last single white mana for an instant target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn. If it's an artifact, it gains indestructible until end of turn. It's a fine combat trick. You never first pick it. And you probably just always play the first one. But that's about the end of the story. We're not first picking it. Up next, we've got ourselves a Wily Bandar, a creature cat monkey. One generic, or er, one generic mana, one green mana. Also starts with G. A 1-1. One, one. Uh, pay two and a green. It gets indestructible to end of turn. No. Way too much mana you have to keep up. Way too much investment to actually pull this thing off to, you know, be an infinite jump blocker. Too much going on here. I don't want to play it. It's just a 1-1. One, one. Not for me. And certainly never a first pick. Up next, we've got ourselves... I feel like the glare is affecting the recognition a little bit. Malfist Squad, three and a black for a creature, human artificer. Um, monitor. It's a 3-1 with Menace. Fabricate one for four mana. I played uh, a couple of these guys in my last pre-release. It was pretty good. Uh, the Menace really helps out. And it's a real question of whether or not you make the servo or whether you not whether you put the counter on it. Uh, if your opponent you know, doesn't have much of a board state, you just put the counter on it. And then you just get in for four. If they do, you can make the servo for other reasons. Um, it's good. I, I would probably always play the first one, I think, but I would never first pick it. Up next, we have ourselves another self-assembler. Five generic mana for a 4-4. Four, four. We just talked about this. Uh, we're never first picking it, and I'm personally probably not ever playing it. Maybe in sealed, not really in draft. Up next, we've got ourselves tidy conclusion. Three black black for an instant. Destroy target creature. You gain one life for each artifact you control. Solid. Totally solid. Expensive. You know, it's not Doomblade, but it's instant speed unconditional removal with a slight upside if uh, you happen to have artifacts. I don't know if it's first pickable exactly. In a weaker pack, sure, but I don't super know about it being first pickable in a pack that has other removal, even if it's less conditional. So I think it's into the, in the discussion, but I don't know. We'll see how the rest of the pack goes. Up next, we've got Inventor's Goggles. One generic mana for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus one, plus two. Whenever an, artificer, arti bleh, whenever an artificer enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach Inventor's Goggles to it. Equip two generic mana. I don't really like these. I know some people were playing them at pre-releases and that they were doing some good things here and there. I don't know. I, I think they're ultimately kind of like a cultist staff. If you have a spot, sure. If you don't, do not just shove this into a deck. Don't play it just because you have it. Sealed gets slightly better. Up next, we've got Giant Spectacle. One in a red for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus two, minus plus one, and has menace. This is very similar to Madcap Skills, which was exactly this, but it was plus three plus oh instead of plus two plus one. Uh, definitely less good than Madcap Skills. And this format is not ridiculously fast, I don't think, compared to Gate Crash, which is probably just flat out the fastest format I've ever really played. Uh, I wasn't, I didn't play much Zendikar, which I heard was faster. Um, anyways, it's not a first pick. Next up, we have Impeccable Timing. This is potentially first pickable. It's a good question whether or not this is going to be first pickable against the, the Tidy Conclusion. One and a white for an instant. Impeccable Timing deals three damage targets, hacking or blocking creature. Solid card, removes a ton. I like it quite a bit. I would definitely consider first picking it, uh, especially at a common. Um, I think, I, yeah, I mentioned this in my Crackback uh, Tuesday video this week. It blows out the Renegade Freighter, which is one of my favorite reasons for using this card. Your opponent turns on their 4-3 Renegade Freighter, they turn it sideways, the plus one, plus one trigger goes in the stack, it's an attacking creature, deal three damage before it becomes a 5-4. Love it. First on common, we've got ourselves Ooh, this one's dark, so it's not being recognized as well. There we go. Hazardous Conditions. Hazardous Conditions is two black-green for a sorcery. Creatures with no counters on them get minus two, minus two until end of turn. No. Totally out on this. Maybe in a sideboard, but nowhere else really ever. Um, I would not put this in a black-green deck unless I had a ton of counters, and even then I would never main deck it. Keep this in the sideboard and certainly never first pick it. 
Up next, we've got ourselves Fretwork Colony, another do not first pick this card card. One and a black for a creature insect. It's a 1-1. One, one. Can't block. Beginning of your upkeep, put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and lose a life. I played this against somebody who had three uh, pacifism effects. They had revoke privileges times two and a capture by the consulate. Luckily, it didn't get thrown on this. He just killed it some other way. Um, but it was terrifying knowing that I might just die to my own fretwork colony. If you're super aggressive, I could see playing this. But I think you pick it up late mid-pack. I don't think you ever first pick it. Our final uncommon is another one that I don't like. Morbid Curiosity. One black black sorcery is an additional cost to cast Morbid Curiosity. Sacrifice an artifact or creature. Draw cards equal to the converted mana cost of the sacrifice to permanent. We have seen a card like this recently in M15, I think. Life's Legacy. Maybe it was M14. He was in green. Did the same thing. Um, or I don't think it was CMC. I think it was power or toughness. But again, it's just not being instant speed means you can't use this as insurance. You can't be like, oh, you're going to remove my creature. I draw a bunch of cards instead. It's sorcery speed. You have to kill a creature totally on your own volition. And so I'm out on this card. I, I would never play this card. Certainly never first pick it. Our rare. That's the same card. Our rare. Huh. <laughs> it's not a first pickable card. Do we have an invention? We don't. Uh, yeah. Ether Hub. Don't pick it. Don't play it. You guys know what it does. Four mana. Whenever you cast a spell, you gain one life for each spell you've cast this turn. Pay 50 life to deal 50 damage. You're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. You are not going to pull that off in limited. Don't try. Uh, yeah. This honestly was kind of a weak pack, if you're asking me. I think the two first picks are the, uh, the impeccable timing and the tidy conclusion. Uh, I, I think the impeccable timing is just better because it's so much cheaper. Tidy Conclusions Unconditional. I wouldn't fault anybody for taking either. I think I would take... I think I'd probably take Impeccable Timing first pick. What would you guys take? Would you take the Impeccable Timing? Would you take the Tidy Conclusion? Would you take the Ether Hub and just go for it despite my warnings? Let me know. Timing, Impec, Impeccable Timing, Impeccable Timing. Forgot about Conclusion. Does that change your mind, Legendary Motorist? All right. So that was live crack packs Worked pretty well. I like the, uh, the uh, recognition software. I might actually attempt to stream from my local game store. Um, the real issue is going to be figuring out a camera rig for it all. Um, but getting the, uh, the recognition software is really the first step. So anyways, the last thing that I want to test out on this stream with you guys is a non-magic game. Hopefully you guys don't mind non-magic games. I'm not going to play magic all of the time uh, because this is going to be for, uh, you know, I'm going to start streaming a little bit more regularly, I hope. But I'm also going to be doing my 24-hour stream on November 5th, raising money for the Children's Health Foundation. And it's going to be significantly magic related, but some of it's going to be other games as well. And I just want to make sure they work, uh, you know, okay on here. So we are going to play a game of Dead by Daylight. If you don't know Dead by Daylight, uh, Gabby Sparts plays it quite a ton. Uh, Adam, thanks for the follow. Uh, Gabby Sparts plays it a ton. Uh, I've played it with her a few times. I play it now and then. Uh, I play Killer and not the Survivors. Um, I'm terrible as a survivor. Um, but yeah, we're going to load this up and we're going to see how it works. Um, if it's dropping frames, let me know. But I won't be able to drop out of the match mid-match, unfortunately. Um, but they shouldn't be too, too... Uh, fast. So I need to do some things to get this set up. I need to kill that and then switch over to this. And there we go. And then I need to start up the game. Oh no! Update queued. How big is this update? How big is this update? 129 megabytes. All right, so I'm probably going to be dropping frames right now this second as this download, or as this update decides to start downloading. If it decides to start downloading. Hmm.
I could do a match and mirror. Let me just see if this will work or not. Frames seem okay. So it's stream, Steam's being weird. It's um the update progress bar is going up, but not the downloaded progress bar. So it appears to be updating without downloading. So weird. Let's see what happens. All right, so what happens when this bar fills up? I guess you guys can't actually see this. Um, whoa, monitor, calm down. Oh, okay, now it's downloading, so now I'm probably dropping some frames, I would imagine. Okay, it won't take long. It's gonna be like another 20 seconds. Not bad, not bad. I think that means it's unpacking writing. Makes sense, makes sense. Let's get some headphones for this because you cannot play this game without audio. Five minutes, but you've downloaded it all. I guess I can show you guys this. There we go. So it's downloaded it all. but there's still four minutes remaining. Steam, you're making zero of the cents. Hmm. Are the frames better now? Is it writing to uh, like installing now and it's taking this long because the download appears to be finished is there a way to check if i'm dropping streams uh, dropping frames yeah it makes sense um so it should be done uh, buffering and stuttering though, right? Two minutes. I was also considering doing some Rocket League. But Rocket League I was testing out, and um, I'm going to play it uh, on the 24-hour stream for sure. But man, does it ever get pixelated because it's so fast motion. Um, and Canadian upload speeds aren't the best. It looks fine, and I imagine it looks way better if you're not on, you know, a 26-inch monitor like I'm on, but... Two more minutes. I'm really tempted to crack more packs, but I really need to save those for crack pack videos. I have cracked two packs not on stream or on video. And the unfortunate side of that is that uh, the first one was a combustible gear hulk. So nobody got to see me open that one. And the other was a sky sovereign. So <laughs> two fantastic cards that I missed opening on camera. I really need to just do everything magic related on camera, just in case it turns out to be awesome. Although I guess luckily none of them were masterpieces. That I hopefully will uh, get on camera. So for anybody who uh, doesn't know my YouTube schedule, uh, I do Crack Pack Tuesdays, just like you saw, but a much cleaner video without randomly fixing my monitor cable or chatting with chat. Uh, Wacky Wednesday, I do a non-standard draft or Momir or something other than slightly normal kind of stuff. Thursday, I do a top 10 Thursday video, and then Saturday, I do Spiky Saturday, where I do the current draft format. This Spiky Saturday is going to be a Kaladesh draft. You're going to get to see behind my shoulder me draft at my local game store the first night of draft. Uh, then I'll go over what I built and who I played and how it went and etc. Um... Yeah, it'll be fun times. Plus, I'll be doing uh, a Kaladesh Crack-A-Box 
which is one of the rare times where I don't do any sort of strategy discussion. I just simply open packs. Um, beyond that, I can't think of anything super special coming up just yet. Once release is done, we go back to the usual four videos a week. I am looking at potentially doing um, a weekly sort of this week in magic update kind of thing where I talk about kind of the big news. So I would talk about the big magic online changes that happened today or, or were announced today. Uh, three very big things are changing with magic online next Wednesday. Hey, there we go. All right. So now it's good to go. So... Hopefully this works. Let's go to the game scene. Webcam's working. Let's hit play. And let's hope, let's hope it works. So for anybody who's not familiar with Dead by Daylight, it's an asymmetrical game where four players play as survivors and one player plays as a killer. And it's basically like a, a horror movie kind of thing where the killer is hunting them down. The killer is invincible. They cannot be hurt or beaten. The survivors have to fix generators in order to open a door to escape the entire area. The killer tries to, as the name suggests, kill them. Uh, what did they announce about Magic Online? Uh, one second. Sorry, audio was super loud. Uh, they announced that A, drafts, are, drafts and sealed are going to be cheaper. Drafts are going to be 12 tickets. Sealed is going to be 24 tickets. They announced that uh, Kaladesh is going to be pre-releasing as soon as downtime is done next Wednesday. So we don't have to wait until Friday. Uh, what was the other one? Redemption is now way smaller. Rather than getting uh, like a year or two years worth of redemption window, you only get about six months or three months depending on the set. Uh, whenever the next block starts, the previous block is no longer available for redemption. So Kaladesh is available for redemption until Amon Ket comes out. Uh, Ether Revolt, available for redemption until Amon Ket comes out. So much shorter redemption windows. That's probably one of the reasons that they were able to make draft and whatnot cheaper. The final change that has caused massive outrage on the internet because it's the internet is competitive, or sorry, friendly constructed leagues are going to stop paying out packs. Hey, Dice from Lie. Um, and they're going to start paying out prize points and treasure chests. The treasure chests, you open them up and they're going to have either uh, a modern playable, which doesn't mean good, it means it's legal and modern, rare or mythic card, or it's going to have play points, or it's going to have a curated card, which includes lotuses and moxes and massively valuable cards very low chance of that obviously you're probably just going to get play points and you're going to get some other commons and uncommons as well in it um yeah totally random that is a good point dice or i should actually update this that i'm not playing magic online i'm playing dead by daylight let's do a quick change on that uh yeah marco it's kind of like saw Dobbs by daylight. So is the stream still going good? I assume there's no frames being dropped on this because there's not much going on. There we go. Title updated, game updated. All right, so yeah, I'm going to play as the Wraith because uh, it's really the only killer that I know how to play as. So the Wraith has the, the ability to turn invisible. When they're invisible, they can uh, not uh, hurt anybody. They can't swing their, their weapon. But they can move really, really fast, and the survivors have no idea that they're around. Um, so the survivors will know that I'm around when I'm visible, because they'll hear a heartbeat that gets louder and louder and louder the closer that I get. Also, I'm not the best player, so if I get paired up with a bunch of really good people, it won't be a great match. <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. Uh, so these are all offerings and things that I can use to change this game. So I can make my, uh, 
my ability to go a little bit faster or make myself a little bit better for this game, but then they get used up. And you unlock those as you gain uh, points up here. No frame drop? Sweet. We'll see what happens when we get in game. That's where I think maybe it'll happen, but I've really messed around with my settings. I went live like 20 times today, uh, testing out different settings and then checking it and seeing if it worked or not. So those are the survivors that we're going to play against if they all ready up. Well, they didn't ready up, but their time ran out, so hopefully they're not just going to disconnect on me. Alright, so this is up to you guys. Let me know if the uh, game audio is working, if my audio is working, if frames drop, etc. Uh, so that we can test this out. I've got a month till my 24-hour stream. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. I figure as the day goes on, I'll play less and less magic as I get more and more tired. Um, so we'll probably start out with like solid magic for just hours on end and then slowly play more and more less mind intensive games. All right. So I'm now invisible. So now I can walk around and they can see like a little blur, but that's about it. So all these red things are the generators that they're trying to uh, fix up. So I can see where they are. They can't see where they are. Although good players know where they spawn. So I just kind of run around trying to listen for them fixing them up. Oop, they're fixing this one up. So if we uncloak, they're going to run away. And I lost him. There he is. So each survivor can take two hits before they fall down. And then when they fall down, you can pick them up and drag them to a hook where you then hang them up and wait for the evil spider monster to take them. These seem like new players, <laughs> or at least this guy seemed like a new player. So we're going to go hang him up on a hook. So he's going to hang out there for a while. His friends can go and uh, try to save him. And if they don't, a giant spider monster takes him. Uh, Marco, the survivor. Whoa, that's a survivor. The survivors are third person. The killer is first person. And this survivor is going to run me on a wild goose chase. Well, somebody else saves that person, I'm sure of it. Where'd you go? Yeah, so you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, it tells me that they just got him off the hook, so he has been saved. She is bouncing around a ton. I wonder if that's my lag because I'm streaming or if that's her lag. All right, I have lost her. Well, there's her run marks. How is she staying this far ahead? All right, we need to just go invisible. I hear you. There you are. I hate playing as a killer in the cornfields. Survivors lose me really, really fast in the cornfields. So 
so the survivors have to uh, fix up five generators and then the doors will become able to be unlocked She is lagging like crazy. I don't think that's me because I haven't noticed anybody else jumping around like that like crazy. Swing and a miss. If I can kill one survivor, I'll consider it a victory. So they can jump through windows and stuff really fast. Yeah, I can go through, but I go way slower. So it's often better to just go around. But I think she lost me. I see you trying to heal yourself. No! Gonna go hang you on a hook. This hook right here. Come on, where are your friends? heard you. Where'd you go? There you are. You're in a corner. And you're down. Alright, so they got their friend off the hook, uh, but if they go on the hooks multiple times, they have less and less and less time to actually stay on the hook and then they can just get insta-killed if they get on like a third time. But we're gonna make it harder for his friends. Oh, that's the sound of the door being opened. We're gonna make it harder for this guy to be rescued by taking him to the basement. So now the survivors don't always just immediately run for the door because you want to get points. If you don't get enough points, you don't get to uh, level up. So survivors will stick around and fix additional generators and try to, uh, you know, be around me more, which gets them more points. And just generally get more points. Oh, they got him off the hook. No. Just going out the window. Oh, mister. Faked her out. So the survivors can also uh, drop a pallet down, which makes you uh, have to spend time to destroy it. Or if you get hit with it, you uh, get dazed a bit. But we're going to go hit, give her some basement time. Are the frames good? Are any frames dropping or anything? Or is this just working? Uh, 
I see you. What are the odds that he was a distraction? Hey, that's the teleporting one. Did your friend go down here? No, she did not. Hey, how's it going? There were run marks in here, but... Hmm. Must have been somebody outside the door. Hey, buddy. Oh, I'm not chasing the teleporting person. Okay, somebody ran down the stairs, that's for sure. Boop. Alright, she's down. Good. Frames are good. Awesome. Hey. Alright. Teleporting person's just annoying. I'm sure they must be like really high ping or something and it's making it really hard to chase them. Hey, there's somebody down in the basement right now. No. 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 <laughs> just hitting everybody. Who is this? Was this the teleporting person? No. So this person, I think it's their third time, they will instantly die. Instantly dead. Spider monster has taken her. So now the rest of the people are probably gonna head towards the exit now. They've probably got enough points to pip. It's this exit over here that's open. nobody here all right are they working on a generator oh no everybody escaped they escaped out the other door petty victory killed one person so those were I think probably lowish level people so I passed the red uh, first red mark which means I get a pip when you get enough pips you uh, get to level up get a better internet connection please I wonder if that's me. I wonder if it's the if streaming is taking too much or what. But it was the only the one person who was lagging. Everybody else seemed fine. Yeah, so these were high level. Level 10, level 1, level 14, level 18. I'm level 17. You laggy POS. Oh, angry people. All right, so that's Dead by Daylight. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. That'll be one of the games that I play during my 24 hour stream. But that's gonna wrap it up for the stream. We can go back to uh, MTGO streaming, I suppose. Here we go. Yeah, so that's gonna wrap it up for the stream. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I got to test everything. It's definitely very fun with friends, uh, Admiral Rar. Uh, if you don't watch Gabby, you should watch Gabby Spart. She plays Dead by Daylight every, well, not every day. She's playing Undertale a lot lately. Uh, but yeah, everything worked out. We did a non-magic game. We did cracker packs. Everything worked great. Uh, I'm going to try exporting this to YouTube, so it's going to be there for people to watch. So hi, YouTubers, if you didn't watch this live. Um, yeah, I will try to be on a little bit more regularly. Unfortunately, I really can't keep a schedule with Twitch because I do so much uh, work with the YouTube channel plus a day job plus etc. But I'm going to try to do at least weekly streams. And as I've mentioned, November 5th is going to be a 24-hour stream fundraising for the Children's Health Foundation here in London. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you haven't followed, follow. Otherwise, see you guys next time.